Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another unboxing first impressions video for you guys. I really enjoy making these videos. These videos are just so much fun for me and I just really love growing my book collection. Today we have thrift books. So thrift books is the largest online used bookstore. The only thrift bookstore that I really frequent is Half Price Books. I love shopping at Half Price Books in stores. However, Half Price Books online can get quite expensive because they always add in shipping and handling fees. On thrift books, they actually ship free for orders over $10. This is my first time purchasing off of thrift books. So this is gonna be another first impression unboxing what I recommend type of video. I picked up two books that I really wanted and I was excited when I saw them on thrift books. So first off let's talk about their website. I actually found their website really pleasant to use. Their website design was really organized and neat. Sometimes I find shopping on used book stores that their website can be really confusing and cluttered with book pictures scattered everywhere and prices all over the place. However on thrift books everything is neatly placed which I really appreciate. You type in the book that you want and then there's an option on whether you want it paperback or hardback which I love because on other thrift book sites that I was looking into it only was giving me the paperback version and when I thrift books I tend to prefer hardbacks. The prices are obviously based on the condition which the book is in and on thrift books the conditions that you have to choose from are new, like new, very good and good I think and acceptable. Again, shipping is free over $10, which is great, but also very dangerous because I know after I unbox this, I'm immediately gonna go back on their website. <laughs> but I'm putting myself on a book buying band because <laughs> it's kind of getting out of hand. But you can never have too many books, or that's just what I keep telling myself. All right, so let's get to the unboxing, shall we? So this order came in this poly mailer with the thrift books logo all over it. I only purchased two items, so they're both in here. All right, so the first, oh, that's not great. Okay, so the first book that I picked up would be, oh. Um, <laughs> hmm, I don't know if this is the right book actually. The book that I wanted to pick up, so, I, hmm. So this is the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette. I actually wanted the 50th anniversary edition and that's the one I placed an order on. However, this is the one that they sent me. <laughs> I'll insert a picture of what the 50th what the 50th cover looks like. I will look into it and see. I mean, on their website it was marketed as the 50th um, edition and I I don't think this is the 50th edition. We will see. Um Mm. Okay, the next book that I picked up was A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. So I'll tell you a little bit about both novels. The Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette, it's supposed to be the 50th anniversary edition. It is an etiquette and decorum book. I often find myself picking up etiquette and decorum books when I'm thrifting. I just really enjoy collecting um, etiquette books. The Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette, filled with practical advice for every occasion, a business and pleasure, this book ensures that all your social interactions will be handled with grace and confidence. So A Room of One's Own is, is an extended essay written by Virginia Woolf that was first published in September 1929. And here Woolf describes the influence of women's social expectations as more domestic childbearers, the control of literature has been granted to men as a consequence of this patriarchal domination. And the very famous line that is said in this book, her message is simple. Women must have a steady income in a room of their own in order to have the freedom to create. Oh, the quote is right here. A woman must have money in a room of her own if she is to write 
fiction. So I've read summaries about this book and it's regarding women's rights, how women aren't given the space to pursue writing and other creative outlets. So that is the reason why there is no female Shakespeare and inversely how during the Shakespearean era if women were allowed to pursue their creative passions how we would have seen a female version of Shakespeare. We would have definitely seen brilliant female poets and playwrights and authors. I'll discuss with you the prices after I tell you a little bit of why I decided to pick these two novels up. The Meghan and Harry Oprah interview actually premiered about a week or two ago now and I just find the royal family so captivating and so interesting. All the protocols and decorum and etiquette that they have to follow on an everyday basis. I just find it all very intriguing. And I've been a fan of The Crown ever since season one, ever since it first came out in 2017. The show is phenomenal and it's surprising to me that people are just now watching it. <laughs> in the most recent season, uh, they introduced Princess Diana um, Emma Corrin plays Princess Diana in The Crown and she is absolutely phenomenal. She won a Golden Globe for her performance as Princess Diana in The Crown, which is very, very well deserved. Bravo. If you haven't watched The Crown, watch The Crown on Netflix. But anyways, so after watching the Meghan Harry Oprah interview, I so naturally I went on to watch The Princess Diaries later on that night. I just love The Princess Diaries. The Princess Diary movies were my childhood. So there's a scene right after Mia gets her whole princess transformation and the queen is teaching her how to be a princess and the queen gives her a stack of books to read. I will insert the scene right now. We have a fountain up there, ma'am. Yes, well I would like at least two in here. Charlotte, just make me an Eden. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Amelia, hmm? let's continue. In your spare time, I would like you to read these. What's in the name? And that stack included Emma, Pride and Prejudice, A Room of One's Own, and also the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette, the 50th edition. This one was the one that she was carrying as she was walking into the garden. And because I am currently growing my book collection, I absolutely had to add those books into my collection. If they were in the Princess Diaries, they also had to be on my bookshelf. Fortunately, I already had Pride and Prejudice and also Emma. The only two novels that I needed were The Etiquette and A Room of One's Own. So I searched them up on Barnes and Noble's Amazon and I think also Book Depository. On Barnes and Noble's A Room of One's Own new hardback cost $20 and the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette 50th edition retails for about $40. Ouch. <laughs> so I started to search around for less expensive alternatives. I didn't really mind um, getting these two books secondhand. Books that are secondhand just have a lot more character. So I also searched on Amazon. The prices were low, however I thought thrifting would be better. Um, I looked on Book Depository. It was unavailable. I also looked on Half Price Books. However, again, they tack on a lot of shipping and handling fees, but then I found both the books on thrift books and I thought I would just pick it up from there. So I purchased this one at the condition of very good and for $5.59 and A Room of One's Own, I got it in the condition of good and it was $5.49. I placed my order on thrift books on Thursday, March 11th and they both arrived on Wednesday, March 17th. So it took just under a week to arrive. So that was my experience buying from thrift books. Again, I'm not really too sure about this cover. I'm going to try and email customer service and see if I could get the 50th anniversary cover because that was the one that I actually really wanted or I'll just look into options. All right, so it is two days after I filmed the initial um, unboxing video for thrift books. I started editing this video and I felt like I didn't explain exactly what was the issue with this book. I was a little bit too flustered with receiving the wrong book that I didn't quite explain what was happening. <laughs> so I thought I would sit down today and fully explain what was going on. First off, can we take a moment to admire the beautiful spring bouquet? I love flowers so much. Um, it was actually the first day of spring 
a couple days ago, which is weird because I thought the magic bunny said it was still gonna be winter for a while. I was wearing a nice spring dress and then today I'm wearing a jumper dress because it is cold. <laughs> flowers are just one of my favorite things ever. I always try to have flowers on my desk in the background of my videos try to. Anyways, back to this book. I had every intention of purchasing the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette, the 50th anniversary edition. The one with the all-white cover and the one that says 50th anniversary edition. That edition was the one that was listed on their website, the title and also the listing photo. When I put in my order, I was under the impression that that exact one was the one that I would be receiving. And as we saw yesterday, this is the one that I received, which is an older edition. So I went on their website again and found a customer service email forum, put in my order number, my information, and I just explained to them what the situation was. Someone got back to me within the hour, which was a very efficient, and yesterday was Saturday as well. So I shall read to you guys the email. Greetings from Thrift Books. My name is, and I would be happy to help you with this. Can you please let me know the ISBN on the book that you received? As soon as I hear back from you, I will be able to research this further and resolve the issue. Thanks, all the best, Thrift Books. I then replied with the IBSN number from this book. I also attached a couple photos of this book and also the website listing photo that I ordered. And this is where it kind of gets a bit confusing. On their website, the ISBN number that is listed is the one for this book. However, photo their listing photo is still the 50th anniversary edition. I went on to Barnes and Nobles and the ISBN number for the 50th anniversary edition was different. So there was just kind of a misunderstanding there. And then later on that same night, I received this email. We're sorry you received the wrong item in your order. Unfortunately, Thrift Books does not have any copies of the correct item available to send you, so a full refund has been issued for this item. There is no need to return the item we sent. Please consider donating it to a local charity or donation center so someone else may enjoy it. Please allow two to five business days for your refund to post back to your original payment method. All the best, Thrift Books. That was very kind of them to do. Obviously, I'm going to keep the book. I actually spent time with it this morning and I read through some of its pages and I quite enjoyed it. It's really growing on me. And if you take the book jacket off, it has a really pretty scarlet red cover and the spine has pretty gold foiling. And actually, I found a receipt in this book tucked away in between the pages. Look at that. And it's a receipt from Walden Bookstores from April 20th, 1995. This book is older than me. That's crazy. And it says Alabama. Apparently they were having a sale and this book was purchased at $32. So I did a little research on Walden Books. So Walden Bookstores was a popular bookstore. Walden Book Company was opened, was founded in 1933, and it actually closed all their stores in 2011. So I'm guessing they were kind of like a Barnes and Nobles back in the day. Also, it said that Walden Bookstores was featured in Stranger Things, which was really cool. So that was a sweet little token tucked away in between these pages. But this book really does have a lot of charm. It even has these indents on the side, the thumb index or index notches. I've only ever really seen these really, really old dictionaries or encyclopedias. They're just little tabs with different topics on them, such as travel, business, funerals, celebrations, entertaining. You never really see books with these anymore. Books nowadays just don't have these, or none that I've seen recently. So that is a very unique and a nice little touch. So I was very appreciative of the customer service from Thrift Books. They responded very efficiently, very quickly, and it was the weekend as well, and they helped me resolve the issue. Customer service really does make or break a company. With any business, issues will arise. Good customer service is essential when dealing with paying customers, and Thrift Books have has got that part down. 
So purchasing from thrift books was a very pleasant experience. I hope this video gave you the information you needed if you were planning on purchasing from thrift books. As you can see from my experience, rest assured that if any problems arise, thrift books customer service will help you. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed day, and I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye!